If you're joining us on YouTube in the future, um, we are we mulliganed to six and kept a medium six. Opponent was on the play, kept seven. I'm gonna get better about not missing the first turn when I record. Read the bones is great. Helps us on mulligan. Helps us find our fourth land. There are links to the deck list below the stream, as always. You don't have to ask me questions as you can find the answer to yourself. I spend time updating those deck lists so y'all y'all can find that information. Esper Dragons? Esper something. Nice. That's good for like 5k plat, right? It's not bad. Land, land. I'm going to bottom the Forsaken, but take the Creature land. I'd like to get a couple more land drops, but I'd also like some more spells. I bottomed a card, right? Yep. This could be the Shota Esper Dragons list. Um, it wasn't, he wasn't playing any Silumgar's uh, Scorn. He was only playing um, one Foul Tongue. It's his only Dragons Matters card. He had three Ojutai and a couple of Silumgar. He just basically likes to play Esper Control that just happened to play Dragons as win conditions. Yeah, that resolves. Go ahead and let him. Use this ability, we'll anguish on making it. Put a card on top, I'm sure. So killing your scan trip feels bad, but you know, it's gonna be better than him letting it. Obnixilus, Gideon, Planeswalker threat. All right, uh, I'm gonna actually go ahead and take this chance to just like fire up Shambling Vent and buffer our life total a little bit here while I can't die. <laughs> Blighted Fens probably. Turtonwald wasn't playing any Blighted Fen. He had more white sources in his mana base. He had two Battlefield Forge as extra colorless sources. I'm greedy and like this card though. Not attacking my vent into open mana, especially on seven cards. Grasp of Darkness is scary. Just trade a bunch of land drops back and forth here. I'm gonna go ahead and play this Blighted Fed out now, I think. Yeah, let's get the tap land up. I might cycle this Hollow Moonlight. I think the based on the cards he's played, he probably this probably doesn't do anything other than cycle. No. No, we don't. We can tell people links to the deck list are below the stream. That's what we can do. Soren Grim Nemesis, that's sad. You know, just in case it's bugged. I guess I could have done that on my turn. That's pretty good. Start on petition here. Get kill target Gideon or kill target Soren. You main deck and gate? That's that's gross. <sighs> scale of one to dead, inching closer and closer to the dead side of the scale. All right, well, that's good. Let's see, has another negate. He revealed a languish and did four to us, so not super worried about that. Island, sure. path this guy well that resolved so I'm assuming this resolves as well 
Maybe I'm supposed to lead on Obnix here. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to lead on Obnix there, actually. Because if he has a removal spell, he's gonna burn it on this. Yeah, so maybe I'm supposed to lead on Obnix just because he'll ruin his path that and then I have a Sorin left over. Play this out. Uh, I doubt I'm going to be... I really don't have enough time to test brews for this standard open. I'm probably just going to be testing established proven deck lists for this event. I don't, I just, I don't think I have time. I don't think I have time to find cards for a brew and like test a brew against enough things to really put in the time. So, we're in this path, my guy, sure. If you want me to look at your deck list, I can like give you, you know, an educated, you know, semi educated opinion on it, but. I doubt I am testing anything terribly spicy on on stream. Uh, let's go ahead and play... The, huh, what do I want to do here? I think I'm just going to go tap land Gideon. Let's just do that. The fact that he hasn't played any creature land yet seems pretty good for us. Our fourth creature land is a pretty... It's possible you're supposed to start shipping with the Shambling Vent here. Let's see if he's got a third rune in his path. It's well positioned right now. Yeah. Okay. I'm avoiding playing out these Westvale Abbeys because I don't want him to know a Westvale Abbey is coming when I secure next turn. Although I guess the Gideon plus the secure is just lethal, right? I'm gonna languish my two guys. I feel like you languish my two guys here. I'm just gonna secure for infinite this turn. And like even if he counters this, I can like emblem emblem my Gideon and then like fire in with a bunch of shambling vents. Pack with all. No idea. Black white tokens is, or green white tokens is probably something I need to test as well. This is probably an all discard in matchup. This is probably a thought not squisher matchup. This is probably not a languish matchup. This is probably not an ultimate price grasp of darkness matchup. This is not a Hollowed Moonlight matchup. This, uh... That was pretty clean in out. I think, I think we're just gonna submit. If he has Jace, we're a little weak to Jace Fringe Prodigy, but he might not be on that card. He might just be like set up to like blank the removal. Uh, 
uh, for the creature lands? Maybe. I don't know. We've got our own creature lands. I don't even know exactly like what our opponent's playing. They didn't show us a lot of cards. And like, we're not boarding out all the removal. I've still got Ruinous Paths and Anguish on Makings, and I've got like Transgresses and Duresses to like pressure their threats as well. Sand looks great. One cap, two will keep as well. And super reasonable. Run off some lands here, especially colorless lands is what we're looking for. Get to play our squisher on five. <laughs> it says black white control, but really we're like a two point five color deck with the colorless stuff. Just get negated or clashed here, but something's gonna get negated or clashed at some point. Oh, he is playing Scorky, so he's not playing. He's not playing Shouts' list. Maybe I shouldn't have boarded out all the languishes if he's on Scorns. I wasn't even sure our opponent was on Esper Dragons after the last game, so I don't think it's unreasonable how we boarded. Uh, opponent missed their third line drop. Oh, there we go. Good beats. It's actually not great for us. We really need to hit untapped White Source next turn to jam Gideon. Top top as well. Ding, fries are done. Bum 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 bum. Now we just need a colorless for Squisher next turn and we get to crush him. Yeah, we definitely want Barrier of Silence to so go to game three. I wasn't sure what what Esper control deck our opponent was playing. So this is great for us. He's going to 16 here, and we're gonna plush Gideon and like squish for seven here. If we had an untapped colorless source, he's just super dead. Because we're just gonna crush in for twelve. He went top bottom that time. He has to discard from one of these. That's not great for him. So like Bladed Fen here would be the nut. Not too bad. Colorless. I'm gonna double bottom non colorless lands here. It's a little aggressive, but just really <laughs> draw bottom lands five and six. Draw five and six drop. Sure. That was that might have been greedy of me. Maybe I'm just supposed to be conservative and keep the shambling vent there. But I think like we, if we resolve these squishers, he's dying very quickly. And like even if he has like ruinous path here on the Gideon, like he's going to seven on this token. We hit color all of our colorless lands are untapped. So if we hit colorless land, if we hit non-colorless land next turn, I'm probably gonna dark petition for colorless land. Like, Drake just petition for Bladed Fen. Silumgar's command. Alright, that's a super clean answer. So, Colorless Land, please. Please, dealer, one time. Ding. Time to get squishy in here. Rawr. Hey, Zach. Nice language, bro. So, Dragon Lord Silumgar means he's not dead next turn. Because even if we kill it, this will still be tapped. And look, my double bottoming non colorless lands there really paid off. We got to play this on curve. Yep, Dragon Lord Slumgar, that's fine. Yep, we were exactly. We were rewarded. I played well, and we got rewarded for playing well. Ooh, Thought Not Seer. Oh, this is tough. We've got Transgress Reed. I think I'm just supposed to be resource efficient here. Oh, actually, you know what we can do? We can petition for a land and then ruin his path off the spell mastery. That's great. Uh, in the backpack right here. And this gives us a, another sword. Uh, by two. This has this has death touch. I don't want to trade my smasher for his Solemgar. It's 
So if this didn't have Death Touch, we'd have just played the other Squisher and shipped. But this has Death Touch, and I don't. I'm not happy with this trade. I'd much rather like get my extra land and take his guy off the board. Yep, that's fine. You're gonna know your So. Play another squisher here. He has to counter this. We get some guard scorned here. Just concedes. All right, dead. GG's. GG's opponent. GG's. Keep another match here. Yeah, the card has a lot of text on it, to be fair. Oh, activating Fen. Yeah, that was a line where Moose droppings were correct. You are definitely correct. Bliss fetting him was better there, especially since I hit another land. So Turtonwall didn't have Smushers in his sideboard, and I've, I've really liked this card out of the board and everything I've been playing. Colin with the $65 donation. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're the best. I hope you know you're the best. 10% of my Season 2 tour fund. Uh, no black sources. Pretty easy mulligan here. Uh, this hand, super reasonable to scry to. We are on the play. I'm going to be conservative and bottom this. We really need to hit our third land in three. Like, Ruin is, uh, Read the Bones is great for, like, unmulliganing us here, but, like, missing land drops means we're just going to lose, most likely. Oh, was it? M T G O. Where is it? Twitch alerts. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, move the Twitch alerts northward. Thank you, Zach. All right, we hit the land, so we would have got. We wouldn't have gotten punished for keeping the read the bones there. What is oh good good old quality white screen hard locks um I think we're just taking Chandra right like Culligan's command's annoying but Chandra just seems like the most obnoxious here I know we have two answers to Chandra's but like they they crunch us for six every time you play them sixty five is very generous Colin's a good man. Uh, the Pauper Challenge happens every Wednesday, Master Chief. Uh, the donation counter is just just donations, Bardic. The the subs are you help me keep streaming Twitch. The donation goal. So, a backstory to the donation goal. Normally, I have more than enough funds to get to all of my trips, but. Uh, my wife and I had our sewage pipe collapse going outside of our house earlier uh, earlier last week. Well, not fully collapsed. It's, it's like, disconnected. Like, there's two pipes, and they're, like, off-connected from each other. So the, the TLDR is we have to excavate our front lawn and replace some sewage pipes. So that, uh, that cost ate into my travel fund a good bit. Read the bones is very good. I I I love the fact that everyone has come around to just playing read the bones in their decks. Like the number of people that were like, "Why are you playing read when painful truth exists?" For me? I'm like, you just you really don't understand how much better read the bones is than painful truth. You just don't get it. He's like, "Can you command me shock this card? That seems loose."
Dark Dwellers Reed is pretty good. Uh, I think I want to anguish on making this because I really don't want him to call against Command it. I guess I should let him resolve Reed. This is sloppy sequencing because I wanted to F6. <laughs> Always make some optimal sequencing when you want to F6. Um, but I should have let him resolve the Reed the Bones scries with the Dark Dwellers in play. The mana was never free. The ma the mana was never free. It was it was never ever free. People that said painful truths was free compared to read the bones don't understand how valuable of a resource your life total is in games of magic. That's that's my opinion on the matter. I mean, on turn, like, my Twitch alerts page has, where did it go? My donation ticker died. Come on, Twitch alerts, get it together. Uh-oh. Is Twitch alerts dead? Oh no! Twitch alerts might be might be dying. Hey, goons! Uh, even if we hit an untapped land here, uh, I'm going. I was going to ruin his path this regardless because I don't want to play Soren and Kevit Dido a Wandering Fumarol or a Call Against Command. Um, I got disconnected. Well, maybe Twitch. Twitch alert says Twitch might be under a heavy load, which I guess could be possible. Lots of people just looking to watch stuff. I haven't dropped any frames here on my end on terms of OBS, so. This right here is a fine example of why you want at least 26 lands in this deck. I could even see a 27th, realistically, like, you just, like, never want to be in this position where we're missing land drops like this. Like I say, thank you to a little over 300 people we have hanging out here this afternoon. If you're in the States, happy Memorial Day. If you're in anywhere else in the world, happy Monday. You know, all that jazz. Uh, Kalidus, just fire up the foam roll. Sure. This is really good for us. We get to just kill this with the old the old grasp of darkness here. And then come on, untapped land, Soren Plus. That would be great. Wonderful. Even if he kills it, Soren got to draw a card. Love drawing cards. Anguished on making. Wonderful. Just three to each of us. Twitch alerts load yet? Twitch alerts loaded. Donation ticker. God bless. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Donation goal. That was the one I wanted. All right. Apologies for the brief interruption there. Awaken Runa's path is pretty good. Um, hmm. I'm, 
I'm not just going to play Obnix and kill this. And the reason why I'm not doing that is because we know he has a Culligan's Command in hand. So I don't I don't want to just get this shocked by a Culligan's Command. I want him to draw a card at least. I will be in Atlanta. That's why we are why we are playing standard a whole bunch this week. Planning planning to be in Atlanta. Making the drive down on Friday. So he knows about this anguish and making from our Soren reveal. Petition. Huh. Is he getting a mix list of his own here, perhaps? It's like three black, these two. Uh, the season two fund is because my sewage pipes going outside of my house ate most of my, my season two fund. We had an expensive, unplanned plumbing bill occur, so... I travel, I travel on a reasonable budget, like that, that thousand dollar goal is to get to like six to eight events depending on how, how much plane tickets end up being, but we drive, we drive a lot of them. Jace, sure. Opponent has creatures, he's got uh, Dark Dwellers that we exiled earlier, and he also has, um... He also has Kalidus, probably, as Jace Fringe Prodigy. There's a cap at 700. I am going to register. <laughs> I am going to register right now. There is a very, a very realistic chance that it could hit that cap. Where is my... Sorry, brief... Brief interruption. I forgot the cap was that low. All right. Thanks for that reminder. I'm registered. Uh, do I want to play this out? I'm going to hold this Forgotten Sanctuary. And the reason why I'm going to do that is he has Call Against Command. Would not be surprised to get... Um, Discard return my Jace here at end step. Are we just getting like Ruinous Path kicked again here? Dark Dwellers Ruinous Path? Sure. Drawing, running, secure the waste kind of makes me wish I would have. I guess maybe I'm supposed to hold that just because I can't use it for the secure the waste this turn. He's going to call against command me at end step now. Yeah, that was sloppy. If I held it last turn, I should have held it this turn. Now I'm going to have to bin one of these secures. Yeah, that was just that was just wrong. Just wrong. Held it. Held it last turn. Didn't hold it this turn. Just super loosey-goosey. That was so bad. Take four here, end step secure, untap, Gideon. I've not played a lot of matches of Magic with this deck. I'm not going to lie to you a bunch and tell you that make up arbitrary matchup statistics that like most people will. I'm just, I am playing Magic right now to learn how this deck's matchups feel. And then if it feels reasonable in Magic Online, I will spend time testing it in paper. Yeah, opponent is likely dead here. I agree. I agree. Opponent is likely, likely dead. I suppose... 
Opponent could have uh, Silumgar's Command here. Silumgar's Command is going to get us. Can counter this, kill one of the tokens. I play two, one to two Silumgar's Command usually. Okie doke. Emblem. Fire up Shambling Vent. How many impulses you got? He's technically dead to this. He's not dead if he has Grasp. Uh, probably not. Definitely not Legacy. I don't have Legacy events coming up for a while. This week, the magic's going to be mostly Standard and probably some Modern sprinkled in in case I scrub the Standard Open and have to play the Modern Classic on Sunday. But the Open this weekend is Standard, so we're going to be practicing a lot of Standard. Getting a feel for the decks that exist. The old chump with my Jace. Go to two. Yep. Yeah, the format's basically come back around to when I was testing for the Invitational in Columbus. It's just a bunch of humans decks. Seeds. All right. I think we just like we're just supposed to squish in every. We're just supposed to squish in every like control matchup, right? Like that's just how this works. We don't want hollow moonlights. We don't want languishes. I think I want squishers. I don't think I want ultimate price and grasp. I think just like some of these is fine. Just like bringing thought knots here is the extra one here. I don't know if I want to rest. Opponent doesn't generally have a lot of counter magic in their deck, so I think four transgress is plenty of discard. I really only want the duresses against like ramp and counter magic. Yeah, opponent made a couple mistakes just like I, I did there. Thankfully, we were able to punish for them better than they were able to punish them for ours. I like the Eldrazi package in a lot of matchups. Like, people just, like, aren't ready for a bunch of squishers out of the sideboard of this deck, it feels like. Saying super reasonable. We're on the draw with two lander. Hopefully we hit the third. If we hit the third, they'll read the bone should get us to the fourth. Transgress is going to resolve. Hit the third land already. Wonderful. Show me what you're working with. All right, see, oh, we're taking his read the bones. Show me what you're working with. He's gonna take our read the bones next turn, so you know, all's fair, right? He has grasp of darkness in his deck. That's an interesting choice. Wow, just getting the Jace online, sure. I, I think I want to read as opposed to killing this, but that might be wrong. I should probably just kill this, right? Yeah, I'm just going to kill this. That's got to be right. This way, even if he, like, takes away our read next turn, we can just, like, savage him by peeling an untapped land and, like, getting the Gideon online. How about the blue red goes deck? If there's not enough times to test all of these things, just, like, even, even playing Magic, you know, 20 to 30 hours a week. It's not enough time to realistically test all of these different decks. It opens what I normally do for food. Uh, I bring a bag of trail mix and some granola bars. So his hand right now is Grasp, Dark Dwellers, Dark Dwellers, one card we don't know. 
I think taking my Reed is the right choice here. I don't know. I could see an argument for taking Gideon, though, because he just can't beat the Gideon, probably. I don't know. Jace can really dig him out of his hand being awkward. Let's just draw the fourth land here. That'll be great. Never didn't have it. Those are not lands. Those are lands. Wonderful. Sweet. Tap lands are great for us there. Ooh, that's pretty good. I like the idea of playing Squisher, but Obnixilis is probably unbeatable card advantage at this point. And like, now this kills the Dark Dwellers on board, and then we get to play a follow-up threat, so this game is likely done. He gets the Dark Dwellers transgress us, that's fine. I don't have a strict list of decks I'm looking to test, no. This probably takes the Sorin. There's no way he can beat us drawing three cards a turn. So we're just like, Obnixilis, kill this, Squisher next turn. I think the opponent's pretty ranched either way. Get lost. That's rude, Cubs fan. Devron with the three month resub. Thank you for the continued support. I appreciate it. That is not the button I wanted to click. Uh, sub goal. It's one off. 81 out of 150 towards our next long stream. Uh, yep. Took Soren as predicted. Destroy this. Play this guy, play this. Squish. Yeah, it, it worked out. It worked out pretty well. I'm really, I didn't, I, the uh, professor, you know, didn't tell me uh, what exactly the video was going to look like when he asked me to record the script with him. If he's got Ruinous Path here. We still have a game. All right, he's just taking all my cards away. Another, another reality squisher. Just squish them on down. Rawr. This this card out of the board is just overperformed almost every time we bring it in. Just almost every time we bring it in, this card overperforms. I think we're gonna we're gonna shift the main deck around to something closer to what Owen's playing, but I'm not cutting the squishers from the board. So, Crux of Fate isn't standard legal anymore, so I'm kind of blanking on, like, what his outs are here. Even if he could, like, I don't think he can answer both Squishers this turn. And even if he could, like, Obnix plus Shambling Vent just pushes his stuff in, I believe. Uh, Owen was playing Black-White Control, and actually, let's go ahead and pull his deck list up here. GG's opponent. All right, well, that's the worst league with black-white so far, and it's a 3-2. So we have a 5-0, 4-1, and a 3-2. Deck feels consistent. Yep, there's definitely Minneapolis. Uh, not an MTG top eight yet. <laughs> we try to keep the... It takes, it takes me tilting quite a bit to... Uh, to make the show not be family friendly. It definitely happens on occasion, but. All right, green, white tokens. Oh, I hate their deck list. Top eight deck list. There we go. Oh, and 
Turton Waltz. Okay, so what was Owen doing? You have to go 3 2 or better in competitive leagues. So he had a planner outburst in his main deck, which I don't hate. He cut a secure. He's still on two hollowed moonlight. He's on four grasp. So what are we playing that he's not? He's got... He doesn't have a third secure. I don't hate that. And he's on three ruinous path and two anguish of making. So his split's in the other direction. I don't hate that. This card is hard to cast sometimes. This card, like, definitely, like, the life total hit on that card is super real. Newest list on Twitter, sure. Yeah, he's not playing any any edict lands. Is he on twenty six lands? He's on twenty six lands also. How many planes am I on? This deck has how many swamps? One, two, three, four, five, six swamps. He's on the seventh swamp. So he's actually only on one more white source than we are. I don't think we really need seven swamps. That's 19 black versus 18 black. I guess you want to hit double black for grasp consistently. That's tough. What's the what's the hyper hyper geometric? So, 60, 18, uh, by turn 2, say 8 cards, 2. So, with 18 black sources, we're 76%. I can zoom in so you can see this. We're 76% to cast Grasp on 2. If we go up to 19 sources, we're 79% to cast Grasp on 2. I'm probably fine playing 18 still. The second Blighted Fen's probably greedy. I have a Battlefield Forge. Yeah, I do. Let's put a Battlefield Forge in and cut a Blighted Fen for now. See how that feels. Uh, I don't hate... I think I need to find another Ruinous Path. Need to... Cut an Anguished Unmaking for now. Put another Ruinous Path. Um, so I need to get a ruinous path. Uh, the website I pulled up is a hyper hyper geometric distribution calculator. If you are not if you are not familiar with a hyper geometric distribution, you should. Uh, it's, it's not it's not terribly complex to use. Basically, this is your your deck size is sixty. This is the number of things you're looking to draw from your deck. This is how many cards you want to look at to draw those things. This is how many of those things you want. And then you look here. The chance of having two or more of those things is this this percentage down here. It's, it sounds more complicated than it actually is. You just need to understand what these four inputs are and then read out this number to do it. That's how, that's how whenever it's close, I look at how many percentage points they give me and then go with my gut on how many percentage points I want. Too many numbers. All right, so I want another Ruinous Path. I like his split on that better. Um, we have three Westvale Abbeys. You just can't see them at the bottom. He's got a third price and dead weights in the board. I really like that. This board felt like it was missing extra cheap removal. And he does he playing a Bearer of Silence too? Bearer doesn't seem great. I feel like I feel like Squishers are better than Bearers, and we have a Blighted Fen for the Dragons matchup, so. So yeah, so let's let's find a price and uh, a dead weight. Two more pieces of cheap removal here. Maybe I don't need these thought knots on top of the squishers. I wouldn't hate having a second dead weight in the board, I guess. And his main deck differences are he's got a planner outburst. 
and a fourth grasp. I think I like the petition better than outburst. This this petition's been really good a lot of the time for us. I don't I don't I don't hate a fourth grasp though. I think we're gonna do that and leave this petition over the the planner outburst. Like this is a virtual sweeper by grabbing languish anyways. And he had he had three Kalidas, right? Oh, he has an Eldrazi Displacer. The Battlefield Forge is a white colorless land. Mm, so do I want these or not? See, these are these are really good against ramp. And I like not being soft to ramp, but like maybe ramp's just irrelevant because it gets pushed out by the by the human stacks. So like these, these could be like an extra dead weight. Just grab a dead weight and a an extra Kalidas. See how this feels. Four or four squishers might just be enough with seven discard spells. Doing okay. We won the first two for today. We're changing our list around slightly to match what, um... So what do I need to pick up? I need a Deadweight, a Kalidus, and a Runus Path. So, place order. Yeah, the reality smashers have been great. What are my thoughts on Modern Format? I think Modern's, Modern's a lot of fun. It's got the, some of the linear decks really frustrating to play against, but the format's pretty pretty deep and interesting overall. Uh, the Fabrizio situation is he cheated, he admitted to cheating, and he deserved, probably deserves whatever he gets. He's got to wait a second for the Card Hoarder automated delivery to send it over, and we should be good to go. So my mana base is slightly greedier than Turtonwald's. He's got basically, he's got a Swamp over this Blighted Fen and then a Forge over this Plains. Uh, I don't look at deck lists while I'm streaming, but if you send me a message on Facebook or Twitter, I do my best to respond to as many messages as possible. Yeah, the Smashers, the Smashers are great. And someone asked earlier about why we're not just, like, playing an Eldrazi midrange deck. Um, cards like this tend to be worse game one than they are post-board because players tend to have more removal in their main decks. Well, yes, I would like my magic cards, card hoarder bot. You so quick and painless. Take my cards, hit submit. <laughs> so again, fairly, fairly minimal changes here. So let's go ahead and give this, give this a go. We are down to secure, which is, which is real. So let's go ahead and rejoin this. Cue up another match. I'm gonna go ahead and run a quick commercial while we wait for this match to queue. Thanks for hanging out here today, everyone.
Easy mulligan. It's not great, but just keep. Top of land. To the slaughter. What is to the why? Why? Why is to the slaughter relevant? This deck does not enable delirium consistently. So, hopefully, something we can price. You hold turn one Lumbering Falls, turn two Caves of Coilos. Five color Mush, excellent. I say five color because they're four color and colorless. Missing land drops feels bad. Getting take his collected company feels good though. <laughs> Not being able to kill his Dust Squatch recruiter feels bad though. No, wait! Oh god. That's that is exactly the card I meant. Apologies for everyone's ears that I just ruined. That was I Yep, I don't know what happened there, but we collected company was the the card we meant to. Well, this game was mostly over, and then I didn't take the collected company. Reality smashed here. One of the decks to top eight of the Grand Prix. These decks are so greedy, and by greedy I mean the the people that play them to top eight events must be far luckier than I am, because playing twenty five hits in your collected company deck is just unreal. Just like the the Reality Smasher four four color whatever. Actually, that that's a that's a good line. So this Languish is, isn't even a two for one. This Languish is a one for one, but we have to take it. Because, like, this drew a card for him, so, like, killing this plus this isn't really advantage. If he just had a Reflector Mage in his hand, and whatever he got here, Reflector Mage and Sylvan Advocate as follow-ups, wouldn't be that big of a deal, but now he gets to just jam Collected Company. All right, at least his company was bad. This card not killing Sylvan Advocate, so we're, we're just dead. All right, extra ultimate price is great. I think this is a deadweight matchup. It's definitely a Kalidus matchup. These all seem great. Uh, Transgress is medium. A lot of times it's going to get to the late game where this just doesn't do anything. Obnixilis is slow. Is this a read the bones out matchup? Secure seems kind of medium. Start trimming the secures and bringing, bringing in the Kalidas's extra win conditions. 
give this a go. Make make an argument. Make it make it uh, generate reasonable reasonable discussion. MTG. I would play a planner outburst over the fourth languish because this is why you should play it over the fourth languish. Like that's that's how you like have have real real useful discussion and contribute something. Like just saying I would do this and not providing like a reasonable discussion on why that's better isn't useful. It's just creating noise in the chat. I'm open. I'm open to suggestions and ideas, but you need to actually provide provide discourse on why we're supposed to do these things. I mean, planner outbursts wouldn't have worked there. We didn't have lands. If we had lands, the entire game was different. If I would have just taken his collected company, the entire game is different. You shouldn't make your deck choices based on games you lost where you were infinitely behind. Ah, oh, this feels really good. <laughs> Scale of one to dead, just super de duper dead. We're going to price that one, too. Actually, I'm going to ruin his path this just to be resource efficient here. You have to play it using a virtual machine. Magic Online barely runs on Windows. It does not run through Wine at all. But your your logic doesn't make sense, Key. It doesn't language doesn't kill Reality Smasher, which is one of the only creatures I'm playing anyways. Also, the increased mana cost between the two is a very very real downside. It's a super real downside. Uh, Displacer is colorless. You can't ultimate price colorless creatures. Language is much better against humans. You know, that being said, we didn't play the planner outburst and I played this dark petition instead. So if this was if this was a planner outburst here, we'd be better off. We're not just dead since we hit that land. So we're in gain six, kills that. Oh, I should update the deck list. Usually I'm good about that. Displacer, sure. So this hits here. I think we're just going to turn this into a wrath. Just go grab languish. 
We would definitely be in a better spot this game if this had been a if this had been a planner uppers. And that's something to keep track of. Like that's why you try cards. Like, is the flexibility this offers worse than, you know, like in the mirror this is probably definitely better than a in in you know, in a mirror match, this is likely much better than a uh than having a fifth sweeper. Like in the mirror, this is an Obnexilus, or this is a Soren, or this is a ruinous path for their planeswalker. And like if you expect this to be one of the better decks in the format, having cards that are particularly good in the mirror is fantastic. Thanks, Tipsy. Let's play this. Again, the fact that this deck doesn't have a lot of life gain is coming back to bite us a little bit. Fortunately, again, can't ultimate price this because it is colorless. If he has another squisher here, we're likely just dead. Probably should have... I definitely should have tapped differently. I should have tapped this and this and left the swamp in this up because that would represent Grasp of Darkness. What is this? Uh, well, that, uh, yep, let's call it a day. Quick word from our sponsors while we wait for the next batch to queue. Thanks for hanging out. Oh, hi there, folks. It's television's Ruben Bressler here from Tales of Adventure to talk about Eternal Extravaganza, which is one of the highlights of the Magic Calendar in 2016. This fourth installment of EE will be taking place June 18th and 19th at the Merchant Square Mall in historic Allentown, Pennsylvania. There's a 15K Legacy main event on Saturday and both modern and vintage 10Ks on Sunday. Every player that registers for any of the three main events will receive an awesome, exclusive EE4 playmat. Prizes will be paid down all the way to X and 3 in Legacy and X and 2 in both Vintage and Modern. And all three event champions will receive not only top prizes, but also some really sweet looking trophies. For those that can't make it, I'm sorry, but we will be broadcasting EE4 live on twitch.tv slash tales of adventure throughout the weekend. So visit eemagic.com or check out the hashtag EE4MTG to learn how you can become an Eternal Master this June 18th and 19th at Eternal Extravaganza. Alrighty. We're back. Had a little over 400 people hanging out there this afternoon. If you're in the States, happy... Happy Memorial Day. If you're anywhere else in the world, happy Monday. Thanks for choosing to spend part of your afternoon, evening, or night here with us. If it's your first time by the stream, welcome. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I am a professional Magic the Gathering player. And um, here on this channel, we stream Constructed Magic and Constructed Hex, a minimum of four days a week. In Magic, we play Standard, Modern, Legacy, and Pauper. In Hex, there's only one format, so that's what we play there. Um, if you're enjoying the content you've seen for any, I appreciate you showing that support with a follow or sub below. So, thank you, and thanks for hanging out here today. The old 0112 pair down. Welcome, Pregnos. Hand looks great. We're on the draw too. Keeping two landers on the draw feel a lot safer than two landers on the play. This like really needs to hit three to four lands and on time. Afternoon stank. Gossip monger. I think I've actually seen what this card looks like in a while. It's been so long since I've played. Played standard. Tap land would be great here. Just like black white duel. Transgress probably gonna be less than stellar this game.
I'm not sure. Uh, when you're look when you're browsing things in the auction house key, if you mouse over them, it tells you how many are in your collection. Anointer of Champions. So this is probably the mostly one drop deck. Anointer, I think, is indicative of that. No attack because he wants to flip it. So this is still mono colored. So yes, we're going to ultimate price this this turn. Kill us now. I there might be merit to transgressing here, just to like try and tag and always watching before he has a chance to play it. But I don't think I want to take you know the damage that I'm going to take from this. Although I guess if he has always watching, going to take a lot of damage. Yeah, it just has it. Yep. Yeah. it don't feel good for 100. Oh geez, these are three threes now. That's just like double double wild nacatl. Sure. That's terrifying. You know, hindsight, hindsight 2020, all that jazz. If we know he has always watching in his hand, we definitely transgress this turn, but we can't know that he has always watching in his hand, so I think it's correct to kill his guy there as opposed to taking a turn off to transgress. Like, if we take a turn off to transgress, we're still taking four, we're taking four last turn instead of six, but... We're going to we're just dead, right? I'm I maybe he'll show us another card that would be good to know about, but I'm pretty sure we're we're drawn to the zero out of here. Like if we already had language or already had the second black source, we could draw to that, but without those we're just getting run over here. Have a minimum of Two cards in our hand that we're going to board out, possibly three. Right? Yep. It's the same. I've just, like, my last events have all just been mono, mono standard, all, or mono modern all the time, which has been nice. Got to dive back into the standard pit. I guess Hollow Moonlight comes out too. Obnexilis transgress Hollow Moonlight. That's really... I think that's just like easy in, easy out. I don't think I want to cut anything else here. Sorin, obviously six drops aren't great against the aggro deck, but like gaining life back and stabilizing winning the game is good. So yeah, I think we're supposed to like Kalidus and extra things in and take out Transgress and Obnixilis and Hollowed Moonlight. Give this a go. You know, it's super funny. Matt and I were testing standard last night and um, Languish for lands keep. Uh, we were testing standard and I was like, what if we just like splashed a dip, a planeswalker that we can't cast the top of this greed white deck with, with the oath of Dissus, And then we pull up to coverage. And we're like literally won the grand prix with two uncastable chandras. And I was just like, well, you know, it's just super, that's great. Just super funny to see that. Opponent mulligan to six. Uh, us mulliganing, def both players mulliganing definitely favors us. Opponent's deck needs critical mass to win. Town gossip monger, monger lovely. A 
Lack of Seeker of the Way definitely hurts matchups like this. I've heard me talk about that a few times when I started playing stand. Last time I played this matchup in Standard a lot, um, Seeker of the Way was the card that we were we were playing to gain some life. No second two drop. That's great. No one drop. That's good for us. So I Pikachu running on screen there a couple of times. Welcome to the stream, folks. Thanks for the follows. Yep. Definitely just going to read here. Do I want a backup Kalidas? I don't think I want either of these cards. Nope. I am just like... I need to slow down. I'm clicking. I'm clicking too quickly. Oh, definitely meant to bottom both of those. Apologies. Getting, being kind of sloppy and getting aptly punished for it. There might have been merit to keeping, keeping the second Kalidus in case this one gets Deccan stoned, but uh, definitely didn't want this battlefield forged in any type of world. I mean, the humans don't cast a lot of non-creature spells, so... I don't know that I'd be that worried about it. He's playing another thing, not Griff Spoon. Play a one-drop. Damn it. Silly Griff Spoon. I'm only going to hit for four here. We're still looking in a good spot this game, at least. We get to languish into Kalidus into Grasp. Yeah, just, just Magic Online things, yep. But I mean, like, that's not Magic Online's fault. That's just me, like... Moving too quickly. Which I have, I have plenty of... I've, we've used two minutes of clock in a game and a half, so like... I have I have time to slow down. Play a little tighter. Loco in Las Vegas with the $6.50 donation. Got to see my favorite SCG player on the tour next season. Awesome. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. The donation message is kind of hard to read on there. Maybe I'll have to make it bigger or something. Whenever you cast a creature spell with converted mana cost three or less, investigate. I'm going to be a little greedy here, and I'm going to play this out. So I can try and kill this with grass while I have this out. This is gonna let him let him draw some cards, but if he doesn't have if he doesn't have deck and stone here, we'll be we'll be good to go. I I I'm planning to be at SCG Orlando. Yep, the the three events that I have planned out that were already scheduled. I already had Atlanta, Orlando, and Dallas scheduled before my pipes exploded, so I'm planning to be at all of those for sure. Another bygone bishop. That's pretty good. Removal spell? Removal spell? Ding. I like how the different removal spells made different zombies. That's kind of funny. Alright, now he needs he needs deck and stone like last turn now. Deadweight should make creatures lose flying. Flavor Judge. Flavor Judge, can I get can I get a ruling? I 
I have not put more. Th I need to. I need to do some research and find out what it takes to get custom tokens made. Grasp of Darkness, removal spell. All right, that's actually not the worst. We get to go boop, boop, boop. Sack this. Crunch for seven because he's not going to block. And then languish post combat. This game should be very done. I mostly need to find out who who makes um, who can make me tokens. I need to find a place to get them made. I need to talk to a card hoarder I know has custom tokens. I might have to look into that. This hand super medium. I think I have to mulligan this. Not only does it like not have languish in it, but like just like all four of our lands coming into play tap seems seems not great. I know we have grasp of darkness. All right, keep it the scry. Bottom nine land. Greed is good. Twenty six lands worth. Twenty six lands. The good worth giveth. Please continue to give worth. Languish on four and the draw might be too slow, especially casting read on three, but we'll see. We shall see. Maybe we'll get lucky any one of a second land. Oh, there's no red splash. We are playing a Battlefield Forge as a white source that also produces um, that also produces colorless for the sideboard guys. We're real close to Owen's list. We're, we're two cards off of Owen's main deck and we're five cards off of his sideboard. So we're going to 14 here. Reed puts us to 12. So even if we if he plays another two power guy here, even if we have languish on four, we're going to we're going to be at six, which is kind of scary. Into a Kithian. Well, that's that's not good for us because this gets to flip next. Turn. I th I think I have to ruin his path. That and just like hope to rip an untapped land here. <laughs> We are going to hit our first four land drops, though, so we've got that going for us. Hopefully he doesn't have another Kithy in here. So we're going to 10. This puts us to 8. He plays another 2-power guy. We go to 2. Hopefully it's not Kithy in. If it's Kithy in, we're just ranged if we don't hit untapped land. Uh, opponent looks like they're just playing mono white. All right, sweet. It's a 2-power guy, basically. And God, we're <laughs> the old keep one lander on the draw, make, make first five land drops. GG, easy. Oh. Alrighty. Better lucky than good. Um. Yeah, secure into Westvale can stabilize this game really hard for us, right? So let's keep both of these. Never didn't have it. Exactly. We're going to play Sword and kill a 2 1 next turn. Why am I a professional magic player? Uh, mostly because I derive a portion of my income from the game. 
or like, why do I do this instead of something else? Because magic is fun, and I'd probably be playing it anyway, so might as well make some amount of money from doing it. Pew! Pew pew! I'm gonna make our seventh land drop on time, keeping the one lander on the draw. Opponent's putting up a fight. Play Cletus out here, shoot this. Gain a little more life back. Sorry, opponent. <laughs> Almost F6. And then I forgot I was going to have a clue. Get a clue. Opponent's so lucky he drew a second land. For anyone that didn't understand, I'm being sarcastic there. I'm being sarcastic. Opponent got pretty railed this game in multiple ways. To be fair, I kept a one lander on the draw with a scry in my 26 land deck. Now, it's unrealistic that I hit, you know, seven land drops in a row or eight. This is eight land drops in a row. Yeah, I hit eight lands in eight turns, keeping one land on the draw, but like... Hitting like two to three isn't unrealistic with that hand, I don't think. Uh, we started with three. O Owen Turtonwald's list that he top eight at the Grand Prix with was on was on two, and uh, I I whoa <laughs> ah magic online. It's fine. We're far enough ahead that that's not going to matter, but, you know, definitely was holding the button to fast tap mana, and and apparently that, you know, just, just, okay, yep. <laughs> ah, magic. I thought I was holding, was I not holding the button to fast tap mana? I must, I must not have had it. Whoa. Oh. Oh, that's what it is. So if you're holding the button to fast tap mana, and then you click on it while... So look, so so there's a hotkey. So like normally you click on this and it prompts you here, but I push this hotkey and I click and then it doesn't prompt me. I click again and it doesn't prompt me. But if I click a third time, it goes to activate the ability even though I'm holding my hotkey to fast tap mana. That's, that's a great interface feature. Let's... Let's call it a feature, shall we? Yeah, so the, the fast tap hotkey ma makes you avoid the click and have the menu come up. It just automatically taps it for whatever the first one is. You got a bygone bishop. <laughs> D money. It's okay, bud. He's tired. We can't pick him up. I love when one kid wakes up the other kid. That I I guarantee you that that's working as intended. I agree. Poor poor D money. Four five. Flip the Westvale Abbey. Attack for a bunch.
Oh, you're still up too, Jake? Yeah. Because he was just in the crib screaming. All right, we're going to queue up another match. We're on a quick commercial, and we'll be right back, folks. Thanks for checking it out. All right, vote for what you want to see next after this league. I would like to play standard and modern, so I'm pretty indifferent. If you care, if you care what format we're playing here, go ahead and vote. So we're definitely we're finishing this league out. We're playing three more matches of standard at the very least, and then and we'll see where we're going. Uh, Immortals. That'll depend on how well the children are behaving and how long I'm streaming. We're going. We're going for at least at least another two or three hours. Yeah, three or four hours. But uh, we'll see how modern and all that jazz is feeling. Rip standard. Oh yeah. If you care, if you want to see more standard, make sure you go vote here. Standard is currently getting ranched, and rightfully so, probably. So, go ahead and vote. Hand seems super reasonable in the dark. Keep. That's probably good against most evolving wild ducks. Thoughts on the non scape shit Phallica decks. Um, they seem worse than playing something like Infect to me. But I haven't spent a lot... On, on paper, I look at them and I go, why aren't we just playing Infect? That's what that's what my my gut my gut tells me to ask. Like, why, why is this better than just playing Infect? Banned humans, it looks like. I assume this deck's full of collected company, right? companies, right? Can only assume that that's the case. I haven't played enough of this standard to have an educated opinion on what it's like, but if it's just mono collected company decks, I really don't I really don't want to do that. Like I'm doing my best to not play a collected company deck next weekend. I guess Green Light Token just won both Grand Prix, so it's probably not all collected company decks, but Seems like a lot of them at the very least. Huh. That's kind of tough. This is going to draw cards too. I think I want to ruin his path to Jace. I know I can clean it up with the Languish next turn, but I really don't want him to loot another land away out of his hand. Will I try Grixis Control? I'm not sure. Grixis Control seems like it's just worse than this black-white deck. Always watching is pretty good. It does mean he's not drawing a card by Dusquatch Recruiter, though, so that's good. Uh, 
Uh, if we stream Chord today, and it looks like we're going to stream Chord today based on the voting, um, we're going to play... We're going to play... Um, we're going to play Blue Chord. Yeah, it looks like Kiki Chord's winning the vote. I, I want to test the Blue Chord deck for more. That's my current favorite. Okay. So, do we know any of the cards left in his hand? I don't think we do, right? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. Huh, this is actually a tough call. Do I want to get in here or read the guaranteed cast Sora in next turn almost? I think I'd rather get in here just because it preserves our life total a little bit. Whereas, read the bones, we lose life and then, you know, get hit by a guy as well. Plus, we could just, like, rip an untapped land next turn and play the Sora anyways. Looking glass with the host. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Uh, I attended Charlotte. I went 6-3 in the main event and did not return to play day two because the GP was so large it wasn't worth playing, in my opinion. Bounding Crisis. Okay, that's interesting. Not a card I was expecting. Sweet, sweet card, though. I guess I, I'm still kind of happy with the Gideon line, right? He's gaining me four here because he's going to eat the hit from the Crisis. If he has another always watching, we're going to be in trouble because then we can't languish to clear the board. Those lands don't cast always watching. Well, that's... That could be worse for us. This gets to cantrip, but we get to kill the board with languish, so... Gideon is dead. I'm going to go ahead and attack with this knight because it's a free attack. Even if he blocks, just like the freest of attacks. Maybe we get two points of damage in. Attacks like this are all, all upside. Maybe, maybe we get two points of damage in, but like our guy's dying to the languish either way, so it just doesn't matter. Jump check, as I like to call it occasionally. Uh, Krasis doesn't seem great. Uh, we're playing a Deceiver Exarch in the blue cord list because we want, um, we're playing Deceiver Exarch because we want to be able to tap things for Nahiri to exile. Probably getting collected company here, I can assume. <laughs> Reveal Hollowed Moonlight as we're getting collected company sure. I guess, I guess this feels bad because... I have... Oh, it's just a crisis. Well, this is great for us. That's really good for us, actually. And now we have Hollowed Moonlight to fog a collected company at some point here. We're actually digging for another Languish here at this point, right? Yeah. I've already burned two. We have Dark Petition, too, though. So we get Draw Step plus Sorin plus four looks with Reed. So we're pretty likely to find a Sweeper next turn. Cure's not bad. Yeah, I think I'm going to top that. Immediately draw the second one. Alright, well, he didn't have Coco last turn. He's F6. That's good for us. Can't kill both our walkers. Yep. Yeah, always. Questions are good. Questions and suggestions are great. There's always things we could do to improve the decks that I'm playing. I'm assuming this is killing Obnixilis because you can't kill Sorin. He's probably just not beating this this sword though. Into into Gideon. I'm just gonna pass the turn here because I want to secure the waste in the event he has another reflector mage. Especially since I have two secures, I just like play some tokens out and chump. Sweet. So yeah, so he's gonna reflector mage this, and then he can try and kill one of my walkers. From declare attackers. 
He actually can't even beat through just a shambling vent. Maybe I'm supposed to throw away a shambling vent instead of a... Nah, I think I want to keep Soren at five. Let's just do this. Jump both of them, have one guy left over. Would not be surprised to see a concession at some point soon. He has plenty of time though too, so like... It's not like he's losing a whole lot here by waiting. He gets to see more of our deck. Maybe we get sloppy and he gets to, uh, you know, I'm going to look for a languish here before I activate my Gideon. Don't want either of these. Ask and you shall receive has been the motto of the day. God, just kill your things, kill your stuff, kill your stuff, kill some more stuff, that that stuff, get it dead, get it out of here. Just like never not leaving this hollowed moonlight up. Do we all not miss bottle black devotion? Nope, I don't think anyone does. I don't know what you got. He knows this card exists. Uh, tapped poorly. Should have tapped this and this. So this is going to exile as a squash recruiter instead of putting it into play. All right, what are we supposed to do here? This is definitely a Cletus matchup. Cletus, we found the collected company deck. Cletus, get in here. Get in the deck. Obnex doesn't seem great. I'm always torn on transgressing these matches. There's a lot of times we're just bricks off. I think I want the extra ultimate price. I may or may not want these dead weights. The window on these is pretty small, but I guess it kills Duskwatch Recruiter, which is a pretty powerful card. So I think the fact that Duskwatch Recruiter is a card means I want these dead weights. Anguish on making her secure the waste is medium. I can see trimming a read the bones too, but like the it's good at unmulliganing us and like digging for the languishes. Pretty easy mulligan. Pretty easy mulligan. Uh, keep it five. Scry nine land at the bottom. I think the fact that they kill the 2-2 two -two that can trips, the 2-2 two -two that searches their top, whatever that card's called, uh, Recruiter. The fact that they kill Recruiter, I think, makes them worth playing. Oh, you know what? He showed us always watching. Um... I probably shouldn't have boarded out the second Anguished on making because there's always watching in his deck. We're going to bring that back in if we get a game three here. Old take three to cast Read the Bones. God, could you imagine casting Painful Truth with these three lands? It's like, how, how terrible would that be? The old pay six, draw three. Gideon's pretty good. Not sure we're going to beat that. I guess if we get untapped land and he can't answer this Kalidus, we have a chance. Also need him. We'll concede to a Reflector Major or Deccan Stone. Kalidus sees a lot of play in modern. This card's very good in the format. Yeah, but your 
Mocha's command. That would be bad for us too. No blocks in this 5-5. Five five. Just the 5-5 five five coming in. Okay. We're seeing there's a chance. Dusquatch recruiter, yep. Another languish. Hmm. It's a tough call. What am I supposed to do here? I think I'm just supposed to pass. I think I'm supposed to grasp this at end step. Oh, well, now I'm casting Languish. It unfortunately gets rid of all of our life gain. But, uh, I guess we have Shambling Vents technically as life gain, but killing his board, get three zombies, sounds like a fair trade. Next turn, we can petition for Ruinous Path and kill his Gideon. Languish is in GG. We're at five. He has four cards in hand. He's still pressuring us with his Gideon. He could could have a negate here. Negate means that this game is very much still a game. If he has threat plus a negate, like we're actually in a lot of trouble. It's a very good threat, too. Seeds to negate. Okay. To continue playing a game, kind of. Even if he's flooding at this point, Tireless Tracker turns that into gas for him. Evolving Wilds next turn would be pretty rough. Crisis means we're. Dead, yep. GG opponent. I'm gonna kind of read the bones. Bringing the unmaking back in. I'd like to play first. Keepable. Wow, this hand's actually really good, right? It's a good strong curve. Answer to Gideon, Kalidus. Thoughts on red, black, control, and standard. I have no idea what that looks like. Yeah, Kiki Cord's too tough on the mana base. It's like people have tried to play Culligan's Command before, and I'm always like, ah, it's so greedy. It's so greedy.
Dark Position sees Vintage play too, right? It looks like... It looks like Kiki Cord's still winning. So, again, if you want to see more standard after... After this, this league is done, make sure you vote there. Something advocate, okay. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and price this. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and price this. Okay, knight's not bad. Now the question is, do we play Kalidus or Gideon next turn? I guess it'll depend on if he like plays a three bin inspector or like another two drop this turn. Just a knight. I think I want to play Kalidus next turn. Reflector Mage will kind of suck. I guess Reflector Mage sucks either way. Okay, so the fact that I drew a fifth land means I'm going to play the Gideon, and the reason why I'm waiting for this is because um, because we have this dead weight in our hand, that means on our fifth turn we can go Kalidus plus dead weight and get a zombie right away. So even if Kalidus gets killed or Reflector Mage, we still got some kind of value out of it. Decking Gideon for two. Uh, I don't think... I don't think... Uh, I don't think I need to wait. Hey, LP Fanlight. What's going on, mate? You are allowed to post links. The The rules the rules for chat are, you know, behave like adults until you prove you're not. And if you prove you are not an adult, expect to be treated like you are not an adult. So, you know, children get timeouts. So if you act like a child, you will get a timeout. You are still in the damage step, friend. I believe you want to move to here to cast your spells. And now we even get to kill a Jace with this dead weight. It sounds wonderful. Oh yeah, he had Jace in his deck. So like that's even that's even another reason to put dead weights in. Would not be surprised to see a negate here if he has one. Which I mean, negating this is good for us on average, I think. Yep. All right, and I'm going to ship with the Gideon because in the event things go horribly wrong next turn, I don't want this to die to his knight. I think you mean more standard hex, Colin. Yeah, a, ti a timeout to a child in uh, English terms means like you're putting them and saying, nope, you're going over here, you can't play with the other kids anymore. Sweet Ruinous Pass and Anguish Done Making. Ah, we got choices now. We also have this Dark Petition that's just like Dealer's Choice. I think I'm just supposed to kill his Gideon here. I 
I should probably do it with Ruinous Path and not Anguish and Making because I don't want him to. I don't want him to dispel me. So kill that one. I didn't attack with the ally because I wanted a blocker back to protect the Gideon, the event he had a removal spell or a reflector mage for the Kalidus. I guess the upside to keeping the ruinous path here is that anguish and making doesn't make a zombie for Kalidus. So maybe maybe I'm just supposed to do that and risk getting dispelled. Yeah, that's probably correct. I always forget that this interaction is awkward. I'm just gonna pass the turn here. That's true. I guess Jace is going to be a Planeswalker when we flip him, so, like, the, the downside is minimal. It's going to end up being, like, a wash, basically. Getting Jace off the table isn't, like, a huge priority right away because opponent doesn't have anything to flash back in their yard that's relevant. Another Gideon. Okay. So, yeah, we might, just, might even just not even care about this Jace. We just want to, like, make sure we get his Gideon off the table. Like, having the last Gideon is pretty important. Hmm. So, this is actually kind of an interesting turn. We can... And actually, I think I'm going to do this. So, what we can do here... Is, if we petition for Languish, he gets to flip the Jace. But, we kill his guy and get a zombie, and then my Gideon can kill his Gideon. I think I like that a lot, actually. I feel like we're in a position... Where Gideon plus this Westfell plus these vents can win the game. So yeah, I'm gonna petition for Soren. I guess I like that line too. I don't know. I kind of just I kind of want to have this left over. I think I'm languishing here. This is game three, and we have some time, so feel free to post in chat. Do we soar in and unmaking, or languish and attack? I'm typing in chat here because um, I know there's some delay. We like Soren plus Unmaking. Languish will only give us one zombie because uh, he's going to flip his Jace in response. Language gives one zombie, and it, it does clear the board, though. And, like, having our Gideon on, like, a mostly empty board is pretty powerful. We're also, like, the Soren line could just get negated next turn, so he doesn't have negate mana up right now. I like the language. I think the language is the conservative line. Like, we still have this Anguish on making left over, plus Shambling Vents and a Waste. So, so we're going to have, like... Our Gideon and a zombie in this versus and shambling vents in this versus a lumbering falls in his flip Jace. That can't flash anything back. Soren plays better for a long game, but is much worse against the second negate. It's much, much worse against the second negate.
Uh, I don't think we should play around him leaving Jermoka's command in against us. That's pretty... But, like, him still having Dramoko's command in against us in Game 3, I think, is pretty unlikely. Dragon Lord Ojitai. Okay. Okay. That happened. Huh. Well, I'm glad I still have this anguish I'm making, I guess. Um, I got a few lines here. We can attack. He discarded a dispel, by the way. By BT Dubs, that dispel we've been playing around, that got discarded. That got, that got discarded. So good, good on me taking the languish line. Anguish on making line would have gotten savaged. He could have another counter spell or a dispel, but like we don't have that many instants, so he might just be like discarding it. Oh, he gets a flashback, then a gate. That's fair. Okay, yeah, I like that line. I didn't think about that. A good player will target their negate and then or dispel and then attack in. So let's attack Jace here. I mean, if he has a negate in his hand, we can't play around it. So, like, you don't play around. We, we don't play around things you can't beat, anyways. I don't think the game's just over if he has a a negate. But like, we don't have any lines available to us that like we can do this to beat the negate. So take that line. Like, we're just gonna do what we can do. Do what we do, basically. Keep on, keep on, keep it on. See where this goes. It might just kill the Gideon. All right. Hopefully, it's not killing the Gideon. Would not be surprised to see this get counterspelled. <sighs> <sighs> nice. I hope whatever you kept instead of the dispel was worth it. Probably the Ojitai. That's pretty good. So draw one card with this. Let him make his decision before he knows we're killing it. Darkless Tracker's not bad. I think I have to kill this. Immediately punished, because he's going to play a land next turn and then can't deadweight it. I guess I should... I don't know. I don't know. Um, am I supposed to start making tokens here? I think I'm supposed to start making tokens here. Shambling Vent's going to crack in at his chase. This card could very easily run away with the game if he has a land in his hand. and I think he's pretty likely to. If I have it face, I don't know. Getting some tokens online sounds okay. Like working, working our way towards this. He probably can't interact with this. God, that's a combo. Oh, oh, it's not a combo because I don't have enough lands. Good. God bless. God bless you. Dead. Uh, play... I'm just gonna play this, make another Gideon token, and pass the turn. Next turn we can flip Westvale Abbey. Make a make a Westvale Abbey token at end step. Untap Gideon token. Activate Abbey. Sack these guys. Attack with Almondal, the Profane Prince. Okay, sure. Yeah, you have a Jace. Opponents just like bant cards. I like. I dig it. Opponent bottomed and then drew. That's good for us. Hmm. 
I guess if I do this, yeah, that's greedy. That's greedy. I think I'm just going to pressure his Jace here. Because if we Ormondal this turn, he can just kill my Gideon. And then if we lose the Ormondal, it's not good for us because he has, he has five power here. So, yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and fire up this Gideon and ship into Jace with two Knights and the Gideon. Bounding Crisis. Okay, yep. That uh, could have gone better. No. Oh, yeah, that bounces. Huh. Well, the good news is he is out of cards. I could technically sack this Gideon to this and just, like, hope he can't race me. How aggressive is that? That's like that's like really aggressive, right? Because we wanted to attack with Gideon that turn to kill his Gideon. I I could do this right now, right? Do, do we like that? I could activate this at the beginning of combat here, so I could throwing the Gideon away to kill his Jace. It's like trading my Gideon and for his Jace, and like he just can't race a nine power lifelinker. I don't even know that it's aggressive. Like, I, I think it's just the right play. And then we only need two two bricks out of him. Yeah, I think, I think the fact, the fact that he doesn't have any cards in hand, we just need two bricks out of him. I'm gonna take this line. No! Magic Online! Hey. Hey, at least... At least this league's now free. At least this league's now... Sacrificing Gideon to, to Ormondal was so... So mind-blowing. Magic Online crashed. It was such... Such a next-level play that Magic Online just can't handle it. Oh, oh, Magic Online. This league's free! We get a free 120 play points! It's so good! It's so good! Oh, good. We're still in the Declare Attackers. Attack, Jace. There, that's a redraw. I'm not sure. I should ask him. It looks like, doesn't look like he reconnected, so. He could play another Jace. He could play a Reflector Mage. Who knows what's in his deck, though, really? Like... Could could be literal anything. Watch us get bounding crisis. Ah, oh, Jesus, this is so good. Okay, we broke magic online, but uh, we won the match. Good stuff. And take a brief moment word from our sponsors here. Thanks for your everyone. We'll be back with a few more matches of Black White Control. Stay tuned. Oh, hi there, folks. It's Television's Ruben Bressler here from Tales of Adventure to talk about Eternal Extravaganza, which is one of the highlights of the Magic Calendar in 2016. This fourth installment of EE will be taking place June 18th and 19th at the Merchant Square Mall in historic Allentown, Pennsylvania. There's a 15K Legacy main event on Saturday and both modern and vintage 10Ks on Sunday. 
Every player that registers for any of the three main events will receive an awesome, exclusive EE4 playmat. Prizes will be paid down all the way to Xen3 in Legacy and Xen2 in both Vintage and Modern, and all three event champions will receive not only top prizes, but also some really sweet looking trophies. For those that can't make it, I'm sorry, but we will be broadcasting EE4 live on twitch.tv slash tales of adventure throughout the weekend. So visit eemagic.com or check out the hashtag EE4MTG to learn how you can become an Eternal Master this June 18th and 19th at Eternal Extravaganza. Nope, the league is still free. Anytime your experience isn't isn't perfect on Magic Online, anytime you encounter any type of game issue or bug or a card doesn't work how it's supposed to or the rules aren't enforced correctly, even if it doesn't prevent you from winning the match, you are allowed to file for compensation and get your entry back for the event that you are playing in. Watch them say it's working as intended, right? Right? God bless you, Magic Online. Where slash how do you get the compensation? You click help and you click request reimbursement and you click on this link and it opens in your web browser because having reimbursement be filed in client would be too, too insane. You also have to create a new account on Wizards website, which is extra obnoxious. Sounds fine. MTGO is working about as well as my sewage line. Yep, that would be an apt an apt description. It is mostly functional but not correct. What do you do? I'm sorry, the the manual the manual commercials no no one sees me. That is that is me it's me playing uh playing a video anaphylactic. I apologize. I appreciate the subs. But it gets around ad block too. That was this was a medium draw. So like right now, I really don't want to discard. So I think I'm actually gonna hold the read here. All of our cards are pretty reasonable against another control deck. Like if we had like a grasp of darkness or an ultimate price, I'd probably cast read. But I'm gonna go ahead and just cash in this. Wait, wait, what? Who else is confused? Okay, look, like there's the, uh, what? Now I'm going to screenshot this one and, uh, The, for those that don't understand what I'm wanting at, um, it was lagging, and I was like, I "Was like, why is it running so slowly? Um, what is what is even happening? Do I want to let's hide the event? Okay, that that hopefully is going to do it. Can I just play here? All right, all right. Looking 
Looking okay. Looking okay so far. The old fourth color, playing it out, sure. Okay, transgress is awesome. What are you doing? What is going on? Taking the Ulamog, obviously. Take the card we can't beat. Uh, we're going to go ahead and Ruinous Path. Wait. Wait, what? Am I going to have to restart? Can I not? Can I not? Wait. Is, this, is that going to work? I t <laughs> what? I don't understand. I don't understand. The... Uh, uh. I might need to restart Magic Online again. Things things are not kosher right now. Yeah, I definitely I definitely need to restart. Yeah, it did work. It let me click on it. Like, it didn't highlight, but it let me click on it even though it wasn't highlighted. It's moments like this that make me happy that 100% of my magic online is recorded. It makes me, it makes me glad that I record all of my plays, my playing. This is an instant? Oh, I should read my opponent's cards. That was that was just sloppy on my part. I didn't realize Engulf the Shores was an instant. That was just super loose. If I if I realized Engulf the Shores was an instant, we wouldn't have attacked the Gideon into that. So I, I am in fact a big dumb stupid. Can can confirm am big dumb stupid. Um Soren does hit players if you reveal non non lands. It keeps telling me he's waiting to respond in this other this other game window. Uh, engulf he has a second engulf to shore in his hand. His hand right now is engulf to shore spatial contortion. Uh, opponent doesn't currently have any any uh, match wins. They we got paired down to someone who's zero zero. So this is the first the first match our opponent's playing in this league. I would like to draw all of the magic cards, please. Do da, do da. Would like to draw all of the magic cards, please. Oh, the do da day. The dream team was here. Dream team, assemble. Okay, so squisher seems good. Duress and transgress seem good. We saw Sylvan Advocate. We didn't see anything grasp or languish or reasonable against. Didn't see anything. Hollow Moonlight was good against. Sideboarding. That's one thing that I really like about this deck right now, like this configuration. Sideboarding feels super natural in a lot of these matchups. I'm just like, like I'm looking at it, I'm like, I'm not even having to like, I'm not even like having, no, if you side, if we restart right now, we're not going to get to sideboard. So that's not happening. We'll restart after this match. 
Um, And it's back! Ah! Hide. Uh, this hand seems medium. Kills a Sylvan Advocate, makes our land drops. So, so for people asking, are we Mardu? This is a, is a dual land that makes white and colorless mana because we have Reality Smashers in the sideboard. The, the Forge is there on purpose. So this, there's no, there's no red man in the deck. The forge is here because it, and look, there's two, there's two Sylvan Advocates. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, poor sad panda. You know, we just, we just try to have a good time, really. Has more threats this game. Okay. Uh, kind of feel bad about not having more removal in my deck right now. Like this could be a removal spell. He's going to get some value out of this tireless tracker. Price Soren. Keep, keep. Keep, keep, keep. Yeah, the, the Forge is a better waste. It's waste with upside, basically. We're not we're not playing Evolving Wilds. This is just waste with upside. Wow, no land's really good for us. So let's uh, Duress to try and clear the way in case he's got a Dispel. Jace. Exp wow, if he'd have hit a land there, that would have been real bad for us. I'm going to retain priority here when I do this so we can get a screenshot of there being two of them. No, I think I'd rather take the Jace there. I guess vegetation makes a Sylvan Advocate scarier, but I think I'd rather take the Jace. The Jace is more upside lighter. Good draw. I do unfortunately have to use this to kill Tireless Tracker because, like, if he hits a land next turn, it just goes insane otherwise. It's kind of unfortunate that our opponents, the game's gone this way for our opponent. Their deck seems really interesting, and I'd be curious to see what it looks like when it functions properly. The game's firmly in our hand now, I think. I guess he could, like, vegetation into Dragonlord Solemgar. Is a thing that can happen. Hopefully we find a removal spell for Solemdog. How do you maintain priority? You hold down the control key when you cast your spell. He doesn't have a swamp? How does he cast Dragonlord Solemgar without a swamp? We drew Anguish Unmaking, just like the perfect perfects. Get our Squisher in here. Thought not so you're sure. Takes my own making away. He's only on four, five, six, seven mana, so yep, just play another squisher.
I feel like no swamp in his Dragon Lord Silvgar explosive vegetation deck has to be a mistake, though. All right, we're gonna restart Magic Online. We're gonna we're gonna restart we're gonna restart Magic Online. Owen Turtenwald liked my tweet. This is clearly a feature. Yep. All right, let's queue up another one here. Uh, folks, I think we're going to be switching to modern after this match. If you want to see more standard, you should go vote in the straw poll. You, you don't have to have an account. You just click the link, and then you vote on which of the two you want to vote for. Do you want to see more standard, or do you want to see some modern with Kiki Cord? So pick your pick your favorite. Uh, Matthias Hunt and Matthew Tickle both worked on that deck a lot, and they both came to the conclusion that the Nahiri wasn't very good in it. So I would, I would be inclined to believe that Matthias knows what's best in the Primeval Titan deck, so I would say the straight green-red version without Nahiri is probably ideal. I haven't personally tested it at all, so I can't, I can't tell you one way or another, King Hellcat. When are they going to hire? I, there's not enough money in the world for me to touch this software. Okay, so, so here's really what should happen with Magic Online. In a perfect world, in a perfect world, what wizards should do is they should, they should just create an API for Magic Online that other developers can tie into, and then people could write their own Magic Online clients. Hey, Todd, what's going on? Have a sword. Afternoon. Hope you're having a good good Memorial Day. Everyone out there, if you're in the U.S., happy Memorial Day. If you're outside of the U.S., happy Monday. Thanks for choosing to spend part of your afternoon, morning, evening, or night here with us. What was our first loss to? Um... Did we lose to a Bant deck? I feel like we lost to a Bant deck. I can't remember, though. It wouldn't be hard to monetize. You don't... You Wizards makes money by selling booster packs and running events. So, like, if you just have other people write clients that tie into your API that allows people to play in your events and spend money through their store, like... That's great. Explain SpareDeck.com. SpareDeck is exactly what you think it is. You send them money, and they send you magic cards. When you are done with them, you send them back. You, they charge you an amount based on what type, how expensive the cards are that you are renting, and the duration for which you keep those cards. I own very few physical cards these days, and those are the, their service is what I use almost exclusively for playing events now. I own Kiki Cord and uh, Mappa Monte, who lives here in town and travels with me. He he manages a card store, so I borrow stuff from him occasionally. But uh, I largely use Spare Deck. It's Tuesday in Australia. Oh no! 
Happy Tuesday, Australians! I'm sorry to have offended you! The old 3-1-1-0 pair down. Perfect. What is this? Is this Grand Prix Charlotte? The way these leagues pair, you'd think it was Grand Prix Charlotte. Hand seems fine. We're also on the draw, which is good because I would like to hit some land drops. Despair deck deliver to events. I don't think so, Todd. I'm pretty sure Star City and TOs would have a problem with them delivering to events. Uh, I often, they, they mail it to you. I, I usually place an order by Tuesday, and I often have the cards by Thursday. Sometimes it takes till Friday, but usually Tuesday orders get to me by Thursday. <laughs> Want to buy lands. Want to buy lands. Want to buy lands. Want to buy lands. God bless you, Worth. God bless you. Yep, take away one of my cards. That means when I miss my land drop next turn, I won't have to discard. So we want to draw a land or a read the bones next turn. So we've got a lot of good draws. Uh, we've got 23 lands and four read the bones in our deck. So we've got 50% of our deck makes us reasonably happy next turn. Over 50%. Took away my Gideon. Perfect. Always. I always archive everything. That's actually a good a good time for a spiel mock punk. Um, there's a link to my YouTube channel below the stream. Uh, you can always find all of my archives there. They're broken up by game, by format, by deck. So you can watch just the matches, just the games that you care about pretty much. So we're going to head and make Nissa pay the iron price here. All right, it's one of the half of our deck that makes us happy. Excellent. Hmm. I just say we're bottoming non-lands here, but I will take another read the bones on a land. If we didn't have a land with this read the bones, I'd have double bottomed. Um, I wouldn't keep the second read the bones, but the fact that we hit land and read sounds sounds fine. So is the seasons pass? And this is renewal. Sure. So we're playing against three color seasons pass, I believe. Uh, untapped land would be the nut next turn, so we can just play Obnex. Maybe that's reason to push this. Alright, Languish. That gives us something to discard that we don't probably don't feel too bad about. Top. Top. Play this. Spin Languish. Being a turn behind on the Obnex list feels a little bad, though. Not gonna lie. Dark Petition, yep. Is this going to be Seasons Past? This matchup has to be bad for this deck, right? I feel I feel like we often just can't beat this recursion. I guess we have, like, Duresses and Transgressors post-board to, like, break it up, but it feels like it feels like this has to just be, like, unbeatable, unbeatable endgame.
I guess secure into Obnix is pretty good. Um, I'm actually going to petition for a transgress the mind here because I need to take his petition away to break up his loop. He does, he does just have infinite everything here, but I think, I think I need to just take the petition away. They have a hard time beating Ormondal. That's fair. Yeah, I guess, I guess Ormond, secure into Ormondal seems like a reasonable plan. He has Dragonlord Solemngar, but we've got two Anguish on making and an Obnixilis, so... I suppose our next turn sequence is just like land, secure, end step, untap, Ormondal, beat you down. The blue is only there for Solemngar, sure. You can see that. Seems like a pretty free splash, right? Transgress, take away my Obnix, probably. That's not black-white control. You don't... Spl splashing 12 cards isn't a splash. It's a three-color deck. Alright. He's loading up. I think I'm just giving him a card out of this and getting getting this online. Although I suppose his hand he has grasp of darkness, so I just say I could kill this and get in with this, but he has grasp of darkness, so that's not not an available option. I guess they have double grasp as an out to Ormondal. The fact that double grasp is an out to Ormondal kinda makes me want to fire this up and trade it for grasp, but it seems loose. Yeah, I'm just gonna pass. Yeah, so I think at this point I'm playing this game out for the time my opponent outline. He can grasp plus petition for another grasp and kill kill the Ormondal at this point. We're also like not just playing for the timeout factor, we're playing for the information factor. I think if I was playing in Paper Magic, I'd probably concede for the sake of time in this matchup, but the dynamics of Magic Online are different just because of the types of how how, how it works exactly. Let's see what he's doing here. Three is not greater than two. I would I would argue that Read the Bones is more powerful than Painful Truths a lot of the time. I mean, Silmgar's commanded here. That was a really good line. Deathly Fiend with the nine month resub. Thank you for the continued support. I really appreciate it. You were one of the first, and I appreciate you sticking around for so long. Thank you. Okay. So I was kind of screwed either way there. Um, if our opponent had waited, if we'd secured in response to the petition, our opponent would have just gotten Languish, and because we did it, he also played, got Solemngar's Command. I'm just going to kill this, preserve our life total.
Yeah, man. Seasons passed. You do you. So again, I'm aware this game is very over, but I feel pretty pretty confident about our chances to take this to three games, and taking this to three games, burning his clock is is profitable. Again, like, learning about things like Salimgar's command, like, that's valuable information to play around. Like, that's going to give us an edge in the other games. We're just going to sit here and, like, activate Westvale Abbey for the rest of the game, I think. The old discard Manissa's renewal. Yep. We know he has Solemgar's command in hand. No, Seasons Seasons Past gets put on the bottom of his library instead of getting exiled. The Dark Petition Seasons Past is just like a hard loop. So the Seasons Past aren't in his exile though. They're getting put they're getting put in the, on the bottom of his library. And then he's able to Dark Petition for the Seasons Past back out of his deck again. It's it's very good. It's it's a mostly unbeatable endgame. We need we need discard in order to break it up. That being said, what he's doing is slow and kind of cumbersome. So we are going to secure an end step here to bait the Silumgar's command, and then we will untap and ruin his path kicked on the Obnexilis. Yeah, I agree. I don't think I don't think the deck our opponent's playing is well positioned in general. I think it's very good against decks like what we're playing right now, but in general I don't think it's particularly good. Do you have another command? No, you do not. Aha! Aha! Attack opponent! Rawr! Attack you with my four four into your quagmire or your grasp, whatever. Uh, your my opponent wins by they've got a few win conditions and they just find them when they're looping seasons past and stuff. So. And again, like I talked about using the clock, like my opponent's down is used almost 10 minutes this game. So if we force a third game, our opponent's not going to have enough time playing at the pace that they're playing right now. This isn't a good matchup for seasons past. It feels like a bad matchup for us game one. So if we activate this, one, two, three, and then we have one, two, three, four left over. Firing up both quagmires. It's the quagmire, quagmire. Yeah, I think post board when we gain four squishers and a bunch of discards, this I believe this matchup gets much better for us. 
Awesome, the mom. Also note that there's a discount code down below there. If you use code Hoagland7, you get 7% off the order you place at Spare Deck. So save yourself some some dollars. They're a good service, though. I've never... I've used them three times now. I've never had an issue. I guess that's not a large number, but... I'm using them more and more. I'm planning to use them for Atlanta night this week. Whatever I decide to play. Need to get them a list by Tuesday. Opponent's now down to 14 minutes on their clock. So, ruin his path by 1-1, one, one, sure. Yeah, playing playing three games of Magic and getting them with the clock is the win condition here. That's It's not relevant for paper testing, though. So, like, paper testing, you know, killing them with the clock here... Killing them with the clock here doesn't tell me how this matchup plays out in actuality, though. So, he's probably got a Grasp of Darkness here. I'm going to go ahead and activate Westvale Abbey to gain ourselves life. Uh, I forget the details. I believe you have to have a credit card that they can bill for. If you don't return the cards or their damage, they can bill your credit card for the entire amount of the deck. But you know, it's fair. You know, pay for the deck that you ruined or didn't return. Opponent failed to find, so they gave us another piece of information there. Eight swamps, two forests, and a basic is all of all of the basics in their deck. So for Nissa's Renewal and Evolving Wilds, we now have this piece of information when we're counting their mana and other games. This is still game one, that is correct. Two in the yard. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Good catch. All right. In one game, we used exactly half his clock. He's at 1230 out of his 25 allotted minutes. So... Spin these. We don't need these. Uh, we don't need... I guess ultimate price is fine, right? He's got Nissa's and probably Sylvan Advocates. We want Squishers. We want Duress and Transgress. I, mean, I don't think we want Kalidus. That doesn't seem particularly good. What do I want to cut? This might just be too much removal altogether. I guess gr Grasp kills his creature land, so I want to favor that over ultimate price, maybe. It's worse against Sylvan Advocate, though. we got a number of answers to Sylvan Advocate left. I think I want a board like this. Feel free to give your, your thoughts in chat. Grasp. I, I think Grasp is better because I need to kill his creature lands. I'd rather have Grasp than Price. I hate the Extended Art cards. They're so miserable. I'm aware Grasp doesn't kill Silumgar, but Ultimate Price doesn't kill Silumgar either, so, like, that's not... D drop Ruinous Path? You're high. Get out of here. You crazy. You crazy. 
You crazy. Cut Ruinous Path. Opponent has Nissa, Obdixilis, and like Silumgar. Like. The Vampire might be okay just because of the removal he keeps in. Yeah, that's true. Let's like be a little more aggressive. I think I need these removal spells though. I don't think Kalidus is better than anything else we already have. Uh, I got a Moto Snapcaster Mage. I got a Magic Online Snapcaster Mage. Uh, keep. How's it going, Maddie? Now the question is, do I duress on two or do I wait? I'm going to duress on two just in case we draw read the bones next turn. <laughs> Need to take his duress away as well. Sounds good. I would like to keep my Gideon, make a token before it gets ruined his path. Yay, blogger. Yeah, there's some screenshots on my Twitter. It's a good draw too. Do I want to take the path or the petition? I feel like I want to just take the petition and like break his loops up now. Although if I take the path, I could maybe just like run away. Yeah, I'm actually going to take that. Maybe we just run away with the game with this Gideon. We're going to make a number of tokens before he can petition for another path to kill it. And like I think playing Gideon on four makes petition for seasons pass too slow for him. So we get to make three tokens before before he can kill this with petition petition path. Painful truth, sure. I cast the rest on two. I am actually going to just pressure my opponent's life total here. I'm gonna fire this up and plus here and just crack him for nine. Yeah, I think the amount of pressure we're applying, he has to just petition for path here. And then next turn, he petitions for path and kills the Gideon, and then we're cracking him for four. Infect is rarely a bad deck. Infect is just, even the decks that are good against Infect, good against Infect, sometimes just die. Why I was considering not doing it, because it gives my opponent more chance to draw cards that I might care about removing. Well, that was like worst case scenario. I guess he did, oh, that was... That was the best draw on the deck. Maybe Sansa Soren. Smush. Smush. Reality Smusha. Reality Pusher of your stuff in. Yeah, honestly, Infect is a power level that I'm kind of surprised is still legal in Modern. It's very good. God, he drew a Ruinous Path, too, and now he has Grasp Up. Gross. Gross. So we need to draw another squid billy here. Well, he had worse draws, I guess. I don't just want to trade my shambling vent for his grasp of darkness here, so we're just gonna pass. Start activating Westvale Abbey.
It's unfortunate that he drew the path naturally because if he would have had to dark petition for an answer to this this Reality Smasher, we would have been able to crack him with Shambling Vent down to one last turn, and then all of these Westphal Abbey tokens are lethal. The fact that he's at three here is a pretty big deal. Yeah, the token's still good. Like like I said, West Valley was not the worst draw in the deck. We definitely had Activate Witch Land Ter Ter. Getting petition for something? Sure. Yeah, the game's pretty close because of the petition. For sure. Transgress, sure. Pick your favorite removal spell. So I'm assuming he already had the transgress in hand and he petitioned for a season's pass here. I'm assuming that that is, that is what happened with that line. We swapped the second Fen for a forge, yep. Added, a, added another white source in the deck. We, yeah, he has Grasp of Darkness in his hand. We know, we know that for a fact. He had, he has grasp in his hand. Transgressor duress, transgressor duress. Taking our land, sure, why not? Uh, I'm going to consult the poll one more time, but I believe we are playing Modern Up next. If you care about the matches that we are currently playing, you can vote for what we are playing after after this match. It's looking like we're going to play Cord, though. Okay. Uranus path. Yep. Uh, he spent his grasp of darkness, so I guess we just make him have another one here. All right. Bonus at one. These guys are now lethal. He gets to seasons one, two, three, four, five. He's got six. So if he has an untapped land, he can season. That's not untapped land. Okay. What you got, OP? Nothing. Sweet. How about if I read some bones? Bottom, top. Huh. And I'm going to lead on Transgross. What you got? Yeah! Yeah, read the bones. Enjoy. You, you do you, opponent. Bottom, bottom, looking for threats. Look at that. The old reality squisher. This is lethal, right? He can't activate both of these. He has... Oh, he has exactly enough to activate both of these, right? Four and three. Fine. I'll play the Gideon. I was so excited. I was like, we're going to get to squish him. And then he had exactly, exactly enough. Bardic community with the $6 donation had to make a donation to make the bar say 1337 because reasons. Good luck this season. Thanks, Bardic. I appreciate it.
opponent concedes, go to sideboarding. Uh, I think I'm pretty happy with how... I think I'm pretty happy with how we... Uh, how we're doing here. I think I like how I boarded. The wiggly, wiggly, wiggly smusher. Yep. Crunch, crunch on in. I should just mulligan this, right? I should just mulligan this. This hand, this hand so good with lands. This hand so good with lands. Hand smushes, snap, keep, right? Like, that's way too greedy. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. This hand's fine. I'm going to tap read the bones. That that might be greedy as well, but I think I want to top read the bones. And I'm going to do a rest to try and take a duress. Virulent plague and read the bones of his own. Hmm. Do you even care about this plague right now? I feel like I just want to take his read the bones. Yeah, I'm just going to take his read the bones. I've kept way, way looser hands than that one. We, yep. Yeah. Good, good stuff, opponent. Good, solid stuff. So long, read the bones, my old friend. Did you see a Twitch commercial? I didn't run a Twitch commercial. And Bardic, you shouldn't see my Twitch commercials anyways, you're a sub. Any land. Well, that's better than nothing. Just firing up. Yep, yeah, we could lose to this. Could definitely lose to this. All right, God bless. I'm actually just gonna pass the turn here. If he fires up the hissing quagmire, I'm gonna kill that instead. Uh, no, uh, C Rex. Um, subs, subs no longer see ads on the channels that they are sub to. They ch they changed that. There was a, there was a post on one of the Twitch pages about that changing. All my cards are good. I'll double check, but my settings, my settings should be, I'll, I'll check after the stream, but my settings should be that my subs don't see ads except for like the manual runs that I add. Untapped lands. It's unfortunate. So opponent's hand is none of, none of the, we don't know any cards in our opponent's hand. Unmaking, perfect. It's actually very good. Gets to kill this. He is playing faster, that's true. And this is going to deal a lot of damage to us, so we're going to 12 here. Quagmire's a clock. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to do this now. Probably has stuff. Selimgar, Grasp, sure. So opponent's very dead if we rip lands here. Gonna start getting in. Yep, dead in six. Twenty-six land deck. Come on, worth. Ding. I smoosh. I smoosh. I smoosh. It's worth noting that this battlefield forge had previously been a um, our blighted fen, and we would not have played magic this game had this been a had this been a blighted fen still. Play this. I'm not attacking smoosher into. Into Quagmire here. It seems like a bad line. Uh, 
Thank you, Bardic. I appreciate it. If he wants to pressure my sore in here, then he gets pressured back by the smusher. Like, we're in a pretty good spot now. Assuming our opponent's draws... Assuming both of our draws are average, we're, we're favored to win this game. Especially since Soren's ticking up. Forsaken Sanctuary means we can stop taking damage off this battlefield for it. Yeah, man. Soren takes two. Soren might even take four, but we're not blocking in either event. Oh, he's attacking me. That's bold. Okay. Fair. That's pretty good. Well, I guess if he attacks me again next turn, I'm activating Westvale Abbey and double blocking his assistant Quagmire. Definitely blocking here. Going to five. Yeah, man. Take my rudest path. Creature lands are very good in control mirrors. That's a good one. It's a less than good one. What does this do? Uh, I'm leaving this back in case we know he has Grasp of Darkness, so I'm not taking two more damage. But a number of X11 lifelink among the highest life total among all players. Okay, so I get 15 one ones. I'm going to wait until this gets. Uh... You have two removal spells here. Grasp, grasp. Yep. I'm assuming he's attacking me here. What does this do, right? He's got to think here. Like, this is a real, this is a real tank. Do you, do you nudge the Soren so I can't make 15 guys? And he nudged the Soren, all right. Plus, second smusher? Read the bones? Probably not casting that. I feel like I'm not casting that. Casting that seems ambitious. Soren could hit my own creature to gain life. Probably don't need to do that. It looks like we're going to just win this game naturally, actually. And, like, my, my, uh, this matchup seems awful game one and probably reasonable post-board feels like it's an accurate, accurate assessment of the matchup. All right. Finish 4-1 in another league. Get six packs, 120 play points. We'll file for comp to get more play points later. It looks like... Is Kiki Cord still winning? Geeky Court is still winning, so we're gonna. Or I guess I should refresh this. Oh, it's close. It's close. But Kiki, Kiki Court has can smush. And, uh, Soren can't hit players. Soren does not hit players. Soren only hits planeswalkers and creatures. <laughs> 